Hello guys, I'm Khumtiran Pekuli. Welcome to C++ Code Answers. Please don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to the channel. Also, please turn on the notifications by button, just so you are always notified when you upload a new video. Today we will be working a basic C++ elements problem and it reads. Newton's law states that the force F between two bodies of masses M1 and M2 is given by this equation in which K is the gravitational constant and D is the distance between the bodies. The value of K is approximately 6.67 times 10 to the power minus 8 Dane centimeter squared per gram squared. Write a program that prompts the user to input the masses of the bodies and the distance between the bodies. The program then outputs the force between the bodies. So we'll be using this given formula to calculate the force between the bodies. Nothing major here. So let's open our IDE. We're using dev C++, but you can use any IDE code blocks, Visual Studio, NetBeans or just any other. I used Visual Studio in class but I personally prefer Dev C++ now. So some information just for the journey. A computer can understand only machine language which is a low level language comprising of binary digits that's your zeros and your ones. Therefore, in order to run this program successfully, the code must first be translated into machine language. Because we're writing in high level language, a human language, we need to convert it into a binary language. In a C++ program, statements that begin with the symbol hash are called preprocessor directives. These statements are processed by a program called a preprocessor. So hash include IOStream, which stands for input output stream. This header file provides basic input and output services for C++ programs. It contains definitions of objects like your C in, your C out and so on. As for hashtag include, it's a way of including a standard or other defined file in the program or a user defined file in the program. It basically grabs the attention of the preprocessor and tells it to include whatever follows the hash include statement. Hash include iostream, iomanip, cmeth, fstream or whatever header file you require. We have powers on our equation. In order to access power functions, we will need hash include cmeth. This header file declares a set of functions to perform mathematical operations. And that's all the header files we will need. Well, if we notice that we may have forgotten any which we may need, we can come up here to write them. So, using namespace std. Now suppose you have a function, say maybe game, and there's another library available which is also having some function called, say game. The compiler has no way of knowing which version of game function you are referring to within your code. A namespace is designed to overcome this difficulty, to differentiate similar functions, classes, variables and so on. Now the std there means to make all things under the std namespace available without having to prefix std before each of them as in this example code. Having std just before you see out and the other image has declared all specific stds that they may require. Now to the main function int main this is basically the driver of the code because all is done inside this function whether we're working with user defined functions chapter or classes they will all be called in this function if not mentioned in here these classes or functions 
it's good as not being there because it won't run because our function is int int main it needs to return some integer at the end more of return functions you can learn on the user defined function chapter check our playlist the operating system always calls the main function when a programmer or user executes their problem code also it is responsible for the starting and the ending of a code and now looking at our problem we'll be taking in values of mass distance force and and that of the gravitational constant we need variables that will hold all these values that is why in the beginning of any code we start off with declaring so all these values may be integers but because they have a possibility of being decimals we declare them as double because they may be having points f for force the masses and the distance now the gravitational force is a number that will not change it's a constant so we'll declare it as a constant double here we'll do assignment of its value on declaration for 10 to power minus 8 we'll use power function which has this format x to power y written as power base x comma power y meaning power holds the base then the exponent and we're good to start taking in those values so we can calculate prompt user for input of the masses for output we use c out so And input we use C in input the masses now prompt user for input of the distance between the bodies now we have all the values we need so we're off to calculating now let's assign in the force its equation newton's force equation k multiplied by the multiplication of the masses which is divided by the squared distance and remember the power functions power base and exponent because k multiplies all this we'll put all this in a bracket So now we'll output our calculated force. For the values M and D, it will use those entered by the user. They are on the CN command, meaning they will be input by the user. 
And now that's it. We have completed the solution for our problem. System pause. With this line we held the program. Return 0. Save our code. In a name you will find it easy to label the code. Preferably the verb of what the code is doing. Now let's run and compile. Uh, we have an error on line 18. That number 9 should have been an open bracket. Now let's see. Success build. Now let's test to see if indeed the code does what it is meant to do. Mass 1. Let's say 15 million. 1 million. The distance of say about 30,000. And that's our force. You can confirm this number with a calculator. And there, problem solved. I hope you did follow through. You can also send your problem questions which you'd like for us to work out here on our email address. Thanks for watching, liking and for subscribing. See you on our next video.